Joining us tonight is one half of the greatest heel tag team of all time. One half of the Midnight Express, the legendary lover boy, Dennis Condry. Dennis, it's an honor to have you on tonight, sir. Thank you for all the nice words, Mike. I really do appreciate it, buddy. Well, you know, Dennis, if, if you came on here and you said Bobby and myself were the greatest of all time, that's just bragging. But if I say it and everybody in the wrestling business says it, <laughs> then it's a fact. <laughs> i tell you one thing. That's, uh, I, that's good to hear. But there's a lot of great tag teams out there. Yeah. Well, when you mention your name in any wrestling circle, you're held in such a high regard. So, again, thank you for your time tonight, Dennis. You're welcome. So I broke in 1992. It was pretty easy. I joined a wrestling school. What was it like when you had to break into the wrestling business? Well, I broke in with a couple of guys I bet you know, Ole and Gene Anderson. Of course. They beat me up for a year. Oh, wow. Yeah, so, uh, but you know what? That's good. Back then, uh, Mike, you had to pay your dues. You couldn't just walk and get into business, or you couldn't be... You know, you couldn't ride on your dad's coattails or nothing like that. You couldn't do that back then. Now, you know, as bad as I hate to say it, a lot of that's going on. And people get into business real easy now. Right. Right. Uh, when you uh, you said Owen and Gene, they beat you up for a year. Was that at a training school? Were you part of the territory and they just worked you out before the matches? Like, how did that work, actually, your formal training? Yeah, I just, uh, they worked with me in the ring. Uh, once we went to a town and they had the ring set up, they thought enough of me to take me in the ring before all the people got in. Got it. Was uh, was this for Nick Lewis? No, no, I started in North Carolina. I started in Charlotte, North Carolina with uh, Andersons. Got it. Okay. Was uh, That was your first your first full-time territory? That was my, well, I started off, to be honest with you, I started off as a referee, and then they started giving the referees bumps. I guess they liked the bumps I took, and they said, no, you got to get – he said, you got any wrestling tights? I said, no, sir, but I can get some. That's awesome. And I got me some. Talk to me about Phil Hickerson. Phil Hickerson is a great guy. I'm going to be honest with you. I'm not just saying this because I was teamed up with him for like four or five years. Right. He is the biggest, he is the best, biggest man in the business. And you know what? I'm not the only one that says that. Everybody in Tennessee, everybody in Kentucky, all those people that were southeast and south, northeast, everybody that saw him loved him. Who teamed you up? What promoter first got you guys together? Uh, we teamed up first in Memphis, Tennessee for Jerry Jerry. Talk to me about that territory. A great territory. Of the, the trip was a little long, but, you know, and I'm going to be honest with you, but we didn't make a whole lot of money, but we learned a lot. And to me, that turns into money. I recorded with uh, downtown Bruno last night. He was telling me all about the Memphis territory. Downtown Bruno was over, man. He, <laughs> he was in the and he was, he was really over there. I really liked him. I liked his stuff. I like the way he handled it, Phil. Uh, I, I think a lot of Bruno. Yeah, very good guy. What would you think of uh, Jerry Jarrett as a booker? I liked him. Uh, well, he was the owner, too, you know. He he bought uh, he bought part of that territory from Nick Goulas, and he went out on his own, him and Jerry Lawler, and they did very well. Thoughts on Jerry Lawler? Great guy. Me and him are good friends, man. We're, we're almost best friends. Now, the Midnight Express didn't start with you and Bobby. It started with you and Randy, correct? Yeah, Randy Rose started it in Pensacola, Florida. But it didn't, you know, the thing is, we we were, they had a TV show. Let me get this right. They had a good TV show in Dalton, Alabama, out of Pensacola. Mm -hmm. And that's where we made our tapes. But it wasn't a whole lot of exposure. You know what I'm saying? Right. We didn't, he didn't get a lot of exposure, and I didn't either. But see, I left there. I got a chance. Ole Anderson got the book in Atlanta when I was in Pensacola. And he called me up, so I went over there and I got worldwide exposure. 
what happened from there? Did you uh, go to Bill Watts? Because, you know, I was TBS, which TBS went everywhere. Right. As soon as Ole called me, I don't know, Ole just lied me for some reason. I don't know what the what the deal was or anything. But uh, every time he'd get a booking job, he'd give me a call, and I'd go. That's rare, because I, I don't hear Ole likes many things. Ole don't like nobody, believe me. He don't <laughs> like life. He don't even like his damn self. <laughs> How did you end up working for Bill Watts? Uh, we got a phone call. We were working for the Von Erics mm. in 19, uh, as it was 85, over in Dallas. We were working for them, and I got a call. And it, it, what it was, we were working two territories. We were working for uh, the Von Erics. And we were still working for Jerry Terry. So we were working two territories, making all the big towns. So we were doing pretty good. And then we get a call from Watts. And he said, uh, Dennis, I understand you're the spokesman. I said, I guess so. And he said, uh, can we sit down and talk? So we met up with him and the rest of the history. So, so this was you, Bobby, and Jim? Yeah, 1984. What's then let's back up. How did you first get hooked up with Bobby and Jim? We left Memphis for Jerry Jarrett. Uh, actually, there was a big trade. We got traded to uh, um, Mid South through Jerry Jarrett. Jerry set up that home, uh, and I don't know who he got for it, but that was a trade that we didn't know anything about. Mm-hmm. Talk to you about Bobby Eaton. If there's a Mount Rushmore of wrestling, that guy's got to be on it. I'll tell you one thing. I've been signing autograph pictures, uh, and he's, of course, he's in them. And every time I look at that picture, boy, I mean, I've been signing them all week. We got a little deal set up, and I've signed uh, 3,000 autographs this week. I'm sorry, last week. And Bobby's in every one of them, and it's hard to write your name down on there and look up at it. You know what I mean? Yeah. What can you tell us about Bobby Eaton, the man? I tell you what, he's probably, I'm going to be honest with you, he's the best partner I ever had. He was better than, and like I said a while ago, Phil Edgerton was great, but he wasn't no Bobby Eaton. Right. Right. Any... <laughs> Any good Jim Cornette stories? I'm sure we could probably have a separate four-hour podcast just on those, but anything in particular coming to mind? Any classic corny stories? Yeah, we had a ride one night in a little town in Louisiana. I want to say LaGrange or something like that. And uh, the police turned on me and Bobby and Jimmy, and they're supposed to be protecting us. So they turned on us and uh, spray painted. They sprayed us with maids. And we couldn't do what we were doing. And so me and Bobby made it back, fought our way back to the shower and jumped in the shower and got that stuff out of our eyes. We went back and Jimmy was laid out. They had beat the hell out of him. Jim always talks about the the riots you guys started. What territory was uh, was the worst for uh, for fan fighting? The watch. Yeah. Yeah, they really believe yeah. they're... Bill Watts had to come out and help us back to the dressing room one night. Bill Watts had to get out there. He got all the uh, good guys, the baby faces. Mm -hmm. All of them had to come out and get us back to the dressing room. They were beating the hell out of all three of us. Talk to me about Bill Watts, uh, the booker. What did you think of working for him? I loved it. I had my biggest weeks in the business for Bill Watts. And, you know, Bill was a good guy. I liked a lot of people don't like him. I ain't going to lie to you, but I liked him. A lot of driving? Pardon? A lot of driving in the territory? Oh, so long. That's the longest trip territory in the business at the time. But we were making five, six, seven grand, and that was back in the 80s. That was good money. Oh, yeah, that's really good money. Um. Talk to me about the Rock and Roll Express. Is that where you guys actually really hooked up as a, as a feud between the Rock and Roll? 
Oh, they sort of followed us around everywhere we'd go, you know, and it was by design, I, I got to say. And uh, whenever we went into a territory, they would send in little tapes here and there while we were there with the belts, right. saying they were coming to get the belt. We did that for like six, seven, eight years. When I introduced you at the beginning of the show, I said one half of the greatest heel tag team. I have to believe, in my opinion, the Rock and Roll Express are the greatest babyface tag team of all time. I got to agree with you. I, I really do. And, uh, you know, they still ride for them damn guys. Yeah. The, the, Ricky, no one, that's why they call it selling like Ricky Morton. He took a, such a beating. Yeah, he took a good ass whooping. We gave it to him every night, too. Every time we got in the ring, he could take it, and we damn sure did it out. Was there anybody more over with the ladies than Ricky Morton? Uh, I don't know. Ricky Steamboat would give him a hell of a run. <laughs> Why did you leave Bill Watts? Oh, we just ran out of, I mean, there was, you know, we went through everybody there. You know, we went through all their tight teams. We broke off into singles or singles. And uh, so it was, we was running out of people to work with, to be perfectly honest with you. How over was JYD when you were there? Very over. We wrestled him and uh, Watts in the Superdome. Right. And, and they had a big curtain up when we first got there because they was only going to use the half of the Superdome. Right. Well, by the time bell time rung, they had to move that curtain and open the whole damn thing up. People were riding out in the yard because they couldn't get in. Wow. Yeah, I, I, I talked to I Teddy. Told Bill, I told Bill what? I said, Bill, are you seeing what I'm seeing? He said, what are you, what are you seeing? I said, there are people out there fighting. They weren't in this damn building. Can you remove that curtain and let them in? There you go. Yeah. So from there, you went back to the NWA, correct? Uh, from there, we went to uh, Charlotte. Yeah, and uh, is that where you won the uh, NWA taking titles? Yeah, we won them there. We won them. Uh, well, that was the first place we won them, yeah. You know? And at that time, those were, you know, pretty. That was a big deal. The NWA was a big deal at that time. I was going to ask you that. You know, a lot of a lot of the wrestlers are like, "Oh, it's just, it's just business. It's just, it's just another day at work." But winning the NWA World titles back then especially when the titles didn't change every week it had to have been something it had to have meant something for you personally am i right absolutely i'm gonna tell you if you put the belts on somebody and they owed them for a year year and a half like we did you can say you've done something because back in the day we got everybody's best match i'm talking about every night we got in the ring and we worked six nights a week we didn't work two or three or one we worked six nights a week. And we uh, got everybody's best match. Uh, how did how'd you like working with the Fantastics? I liked them. I really did. They, were, they was a good little team. The thing about it, their timing was bad. Uh, they just couldn't get to a place where they could, you know. And I told them, I said, look, y'all got to get away from rock and roll because they're going to be the tag team. Right. And I told them, uh, you know, I told them, and sure enough, they did. They left and did very good. They left uh, when we moved into, uh, when we went to Charlotte, they went into Louisiana where we just left, and they did very well. Yeah, that's what uh, Jim Cornette always says on his show, that the Fantastics always seem to follow the rock and roll, and then the fans saw them as second best a lot of times. And I, and I told them straight up. I'm pretty, you know, I pretty much tell it like it is. And I said, look, I ain't going to use y'all here. They're just not going to do it, Bobby. And, you know, he said, God was a partner. And they, and they left and it did, did very well. During your NWA run, you were uh, you were asked to go meet with Vince McMahon. Is that correct? I'm sure I was in Charlotte at the time. Mm -hmm. What was that meeting like? It was a great meeting. And I thought we had a deal. Who didn't you see, what a lot of people don't understand is Vince called us to come in. Okay, mm -hmm. if, if Vince calls you, you get to name your prize. If you call Vince, he gets to name your prize. You know right. what you're gonna make. 
Right. And I told Bobby and Jimmy, I said, boys, we got to go. I said, this is a big deal. He called us. We didn't call him. And uh, sure enough, we had a meeting and everything. He flew us up. And we had a meeting. And we actually agreed to come. And then, you know, things changed. What was your impressions of Vince? I liked him. I really did. So why I did you leave? One time, yes, sir. And he gave us a hell of a deal. We were sitting in a motel. I said, look, we can't let the Crockett's know we're here with you, Vince. If we do, they're going to smash it when we get back to Charlotte. He right. said, we ain't going to tell nobody, Mr. Conner. I said, okay. And we sat down and we talked to, you know, the, here's the deal we had. We had a certain amount of money, and we were going to be the first tag team dogs. We were going to be the first one to get to sell dogs. That would have been a fortune right then. Right. The action figures, yeah, they were huge. I mean, that's when it first started. I'm talking about 86, 87. Right. Okay, that's big. And what you just, what happened? Did it, did it fall through on their end, on your end? It fell through with Bobby and Jimmy. They changed their mind. And I explained to them, I said, Bobby, Jimmy, come over to the house. We're going to sit down and talk. And he said, okay. And I said, look, we've been here a year and a half. We work with the same guys all the time. I said, we don't been through the rock and roll. We've been, done been through the road warriors with the scalpel match. We've been through the fantastic. We ain't got nobody else to work with here. We need to go to uh, New York. And we all agreed. And then I don't know what happened. They changed it back. Why did you leave the NWA? And, and damn, I tell you one thing, boy. I'm I'm kind of funny. If somebody offers me a lot of money, I'm going. Right. Yeah. I even work for Brian Ganya, for God's sake. Yeah. <laughs> well, why, why did you leave the NWA uh, when you were teaming with Bobby? The fact of the deal with uh, uh, New York, they I thought we had the deal, and they changed their mind, so. I said, well, this is what we've been waiting for, this big deal here. If y'all don't want to go, I'm leaving. So I left. And then uh, then you went to work for, for Vern then? To work for Vern, call me up. Uh, Wahoo McDaniel was a book, and me and Wahoo was really, really good friends. And he called me up and he said, Dennis, I need you on Friday and Saturday night. That's all I need. I said, okay, how much money are we talking about? And he told me. I said, I'll be there. I was living in Denver. He said, we're going to fly you everywhere. He said, um, and this is, my, this is how much money you're going to make. I said, okay, book it. I'll be there. But it turned out to be more than just the two days. Yeah, I just worked Friday and Saturday and was making more money than I was in some of the other places all week. This is when you, you start a team with Randy again and you were managed by Paulie? Right, exactly. Talk, talk to you about Paul Heyman. Paul oh, Heyman is great. I love him. Mm -hmm. I'm going to be honest with you. I've, I've had two of the greatest managers in the business, Jimmy Cornette and Paul Heyman. Yeah. Hard to top those two, that's for sure. You and he, he ain't going to be able to do it. No. Any good Paul Heyman stories? Well, say it again. Any good Paul Heyman stories? Uh, no, uh, you know, uh, uh, Randy called me yesterday, or the day before, I guess it was, and uh, I think Randy and him still stay in, stay in touch, mm -hmm. and he told uh, Randy to tell me hello. I haven't spoken to him in 20 years. When you were at Vern, what did you think of him as territory? I didn't like it. I didn't like that territory at all. But like I said, I was only working two nights a week, Friday and Saturday night. So I was making, you know, quite a bit of money just for those two nights. And you won the AWA. Really... Go ahead, I'm sorry. Go ahead. Go ahead. So you won the uh, AWA tag team titles and you dropped them to Shawn Michaels and Marty Jannetty. Sure did. What was it like working with the young uh, Shawn Michaels and Marty Jannetty? What a refreshing, I mean, it was, 
And those guys could do anything we called. Whatever we called, they could do. And I'm telling you, it was a joy to work with them. It's, it's crazy when you look back at the early days of Shawn Michaels and what he was able to accomplish. I mean, just what a what an unbelievable talent. Well, he was a natural, Mike. Uh, you didn't you have to tell him but one time. He, some guys are just naturals. You can't teach them. They already know. They know what, what's going on and what time it is and when to do it and when not to do it. And then both of them got Marty Gennetti was very good in the ring. Uh, how did you end up going back to the NWA in the Battle of the Midnights? Uh, Dr. Rose gave me a call. He was living in uh, Austin, Texas, mm-hmm. and he, he used to call me D.C. D.C. Cab was my nickname. And he, he called me up and down and said, D.C. Cab. I said, yep. And he said, you want to make some money, buddy? I said, well, what do you think, Dusty? He said, yeah, no, I don't think you do. But see, I didn't know it at the time, but they were already going out of business when he called me up. Because I went in there, me and Randy and Paul, and we did the Midnight Against Midnight, and we busted the territory wide open again, but it was already in the making to be sold, and we didn't know it. Nobody knew it. So you go in there. I think you had one You had one pay-per-view match at Starcade, and then you were booked for a Loser Leave Town match, and then you you quit that the day of or around that time? I went the week of, yeah. Hey. I told him I wouldn't win no loser leave town. Mm-hmm. I'm gonna be honest, I wouldn't I wouldn't always the easiest guy to get along with, but I had to stand up for myself. If I didn't, who else was gonna do it? Right. Was this your first time actually working against Bobby Eaton when you came back? Uh, no, I worked with Bobby when he first started in the business in Nashville. He was mm-hmm. a baby place. Okay. And me and him used to tear the damn building down. He didn't do anything. Look, yeah. I've had great partners. I can say a word about them. I love them all. And I, I, I've been so blessed with the partners I've had. It's unbelievable. I've had those, some of the best ones of all time. Did you ever work with Harley Race? I did. Chattanooga, Tennessee would have been 1981 or two, maybe. Any good Harley stories? Uh, we worked together. Right? And the funny thing about it, uh, he started beating me up and everything. And of course, he beat me. He was the world champion. Mm-hmm. And when he got outside, they busted his uh, headlights out of his car <laughs> and he couldn't see the drive. So we had to follow somebody all the way back to Nashville with no headlights. Um, when I was doing some research on you, Dennis, I didn't know this. You worked as a trainer for the WWF? I did, uh, 2011, 12, and 13, down in uh, Tampa before they moved to Orlando. Uh, when it was in Tampa, I went down there. I trained the Euro Usos and uh, what's the other guy's name? I can't think of nine. Uh, the seat at the table, what's the name? Roman Reigns? Roman Reigns, uh, Trained him and the Usos. I had a good time then. I liked it. Was this F- FCW? Was it Florida Championship What's Wrestling at the time? W- w- this wasn't NXT at the time, was it? Yeah, it was NXT. It was. Uh, it, was, was uh, start, you know, it was the start of NXT. They were just getting it uh, going into the first phase of it. I can't believe I never heard that you were a trainer down there. Who else was the trainers? Uh, God, uh, Tom Preacher, mm-hmm. he was there. Uh, it was me, Tom, Steve Conn. He was running his show because uh, I think that was his gym, actually. But actually, it was just me and uh, Tom Preacher. In 1992, Steve Kern was my first match ever. Dennis, can you imagine your first match with Steve Kern? i tell you one thing. Me and him had a couple of problems over the years in the ring. Really? Yep. A- anything you want to elaborate don't on? Me. Yeah, you don't tell me. I don't tell you. I told him in the ring. That, how did that end up? I told, him, I told him to get his best old. 
Did cooler heads prevail? On the bottom. Yeah. Did cooler heads prevail, or did uh, did you guys have to go out in the ring? Well, I looked over Randy, and he was scared to death. And I looked over Stan Lane, and he was scared to death. And I was like, "Damn, what, what, what's up?" <laughs> I said, "Hell, well, I ain't gonna have this shit. You're not coming into Nashville your first night in there and think you're gonna box my ass around. It ain't gonna work." So it's the fabulous ones versus the midnight. At that time, there wasn't a fabulous one just yet. Okay. And then they turned into the fabs, yeah. But that night, they were just, I think they first teamed up and they were looking for a name. And uh, Jackie Fargo, he, he's the one who gave him that name, the fabs. Right. Any uh, big time locker room fights that you can remember that now that you brought something like that up? Any uh, has come to mind that you've seen? I was never in one, uh, I'm, and you know what? Uh, all my years in the in the dressing rooms, I never saw a fight. Interesting. All right. Well, Dennis, this was awesome for me. I had such a blast talking to you. Uh, is there anywhere someone could reach you if they want to book you? Yeah, just uh, get my phone number. Yeah, I'm I'm still moving, doing stuff, and. I tell you what, this is a great business, Mike. You know it is. And uh, I, to me, I just love to be around the guys still. And I still think I can, uh, can teach them some stuff because every one of them come to me. You know, I have trained at a... Uh... Hold on just a minute, Mike. I have, uh, I have the FTR. You know, those guys in AWA. They're phenomenal. They are great, and uh, they play. They come out there, music and everything. They really like us, and I tell you what, take my word for this. This is the best tag team you're ever going to see. Oh, coming from you, that's that's even higher praise. Well, if you want to see I Dennis, tell Scott, go ahead, I sir. tell him every time I get on the phone, so we still we're in close contact. Me and David Harwood, mm -hmm. we're in close contact. And I tell them every time I talk to them. They are phenomenal. They're definitely a throwback to the old, to the good old days. I tell you what, it was a, you know, you don't realize that you get caught up in it. You don't realize, you know, what a, what a, I mean, it's sort of like a, a, a heavenly thing. Like somebody's looking down on you. We had the best runs everywhere we went. We were so blessed. I didn't even, it's hard for me to even talk about it. That's awesome. You, too, you know, I had cancer, uh, throat cancer, right? Yes, sir. Yeah, I've, got right. a, uh, I've got a device down in my throat. But you know what? I still love the business. How is your health? You're good. I'm uh, 62 to 35. Work out three or four times a week and go to the towns on the weekend. That's awesome, man. And you're going to be in New Jersey, so I'm going to see you May 6th at the Men in Arena for 80s Con. The original Midnight Express will be back together again. Randy Rose, lover boy Dennis, I can't wait. Hope you don't mind, Dennis. I'm definitely going to have to take a few pictures with you that night because I can't wait to meet you in person. I can't wait to meet you either, Mike. Hey, I talked to Jim going ahead and told him. Jim called me yesterday. Yeah. And uh, he said, he should tell you hello for when I talked to you. Good. Uh, Jim, when I first started, Jim did so much for me. And then he got in, in charge of like booking for the WWF and booking the, the extra talent. And every chance he got, he would, he would hook me up. So he was very good to me. I have nothing but praise to say about Jim Cornette. I love the man. Uh, he likes you too. He, uh, he talked about you for a few minutes. He said, yep. It's a good guy. Then I said, well, I'm doing a, a Zoom with him. He said, well, y'all have fun, I guarantee you. I said, well, and uh, sure enough, we have. Awesome. This is great, Dennis. Hope you don't mind. I'll be texting you from time to time. Keep it in touch. You're one of my uh, one of my favorites. This is great talking to you, sir. Thank you very much, Mike. I appreciate it, and thank you for all the nice words. I appreciate it. Thank you for all the memories, Dennis. I will see you May 6th. Sounds good. Thank you, buddy. Thanks, sir.
Bye-bye. Bye-bye.